Welcome to Brookline High School Post uh, High School Planning, Junior Post High School Planning uh, Parent Presentation. My name is Lenny Libenson and I'm the college counselor at Brookline High School. So I'll take you for the next half an hour with the goal of giving you information about the college process, leave this for you to leave the session calmer and better informed about the college process and then explore other paths. Uh, everything I present here will be available on Brookline High School webpage, which is uh, right here. Uh, also, if you just Google Brookline High School guidance, it will be uh, available. And all the materials we distributed are already uploaded on the page. In addition, we repeat the same information to our students during junior seminars. Uh, we, uh, they take place in March in advisory. And in addition, the second part of the seminars will be during the MCAS. Uh, when sophomores take MCAS, seniors, uh, juniors come in and uh, listen to us talk about the college process. Uh, we have a, a fully staffed college and career center uh, by me, Lenny Livingston, Kate Cordner. Kate Cordner is our uh, career um, counselor, and I am the college counselor. Uh, both of us part time in the center, we're in room 279. When I present this uh, slide, I always like to mention that not all the students in our school go to college. We're a very diverse school. So this is the statistic for last year. We have about 86% of the students going to four-year college. Then 3% uh, go to non-American schools. Two-year college is 5%. And then the other options, which are becoming more popular, gap year, with 2% of kids going to the gap year programs. Uh, and 1% of our students uh, employed and 1% of our students go to military. We support all our students and uh, Kate and I and all the con guidance counselors are happy to talk to all our students. Any path they prefer will uh, have materials and help them go through uh, with their plans. Uh, another path that's becoming more and more popular it's community college, and uh, we have uh, wonderful community colleges around us. I particularly like Mass Bay, Bunker Hill, and uh, recently uh, a very popular program called Mass Transfer. You can see the website right here. This is a program that allows you to go to any community college in Massachusetts, and then after a couple of years with a certain GPA and certain requirements, transfer directly to any Massachusetts State uh, University. For example, uh, UMass Amherst, UMass Boston, Fisherbrook State, or any schools of that sort. So a lot of the students are now taking advantage of this program that saves a lot of money and um, makes the process a little easier. All right, so what colleges are looking for, and uh, you can see here, the grades are a top thing. Colleges are academic institutions, and they're looking for students who are strong academically. They're looking for really uh, good for good grades in uh, uh, the most difficult academic classes the student could take. We look at the uh, uh, scores second, essays and recommendations third, and then financial resources, and then everything else. So every time I meet with students, they ask me what can I do uh, to increase my chance of getting into colleges. Grades are number one. Uh, that said, it's really important for our uh, juniors to know right now they're choosing their classes for their senior year, and it's really important for them to choose a balanced senior course load. For the freshman, sophomore, and junior years, we send only the final grades to colleges. Senior year is an exception where we send the first term and second term to college. So this is not really a year to take classes, uh, to experiment with really difficult classes because the grades from those classes will be sent in for term one and term two. So it's really important for the students to talk to their guidance counselors uh, about the classes for next year, but my general advice is to listen to your teachers. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, they recommend the correct class for the next year, and I would take the classes that your teachers recommend. All right, so some of the ways to look for colleges are size, location, academic interest, culture. A couple of questions that I really like uh, are, is um, the first one, are classes taught by professors? A lot of schools, they have uh, uh, very famous names, 
but the classes in those schools are taught by grad students. And then uh, can we afford the college? That becomes a really important question. In the recent years, as the college tuition goes up, uh, and families sometimes really struggle to pay for the college where they got it. So again, size, location, academic interest, culture, and then financial uh, dimensions are really important. Last year, we, we uh, took a survey of our students, um, asking them multiple questions, and I'll present slides with the uh, answers from that survey. And one of the questions was, how did you hear about college you're attending? And number one was my family, then friends, and the counselor, and the teachers, the coach, coach, and my own research. So it's really uh, the family and own research is really, really important. Uh, a lot of times students talk to their family because they hear first account of where the uh, family went to college or relatives went to college, or they have stu other students coming back for the spring break or for Christmas break and talking about their school. So it's really, really important. The other resources I like are Fist Guide to Colleges and the Princeton Review Guide to Colleges. These are the two books that I always recommend to uh, learn about schools. You don't necessarily have to buy a new newest edition of this book. I would recommend just getting one in the library or getting the older version. They usually don't change that much. Uh, the biggest uh, and greatest tool we have at our disposal is Navians. This is a program that every student at Brookline High uh, gets as a freshman, gets the username, password, they can log in. It helps with career exploration, building your resume, uh, college research, and scholarship information. And moreover, this is the program we use to send the student's information to college. To register for Navians, you have to have a registration code. So if you have not received your registration code as a freshman or if you transfer to our school afterwards, email me, Lenny Livingston at psbma.org or your counselor and they'll give you the password. One thing I'd like to stress here is the Navians College Search. Actually, they have two really powerful college search engines, Supermatch College Search and then uh, just a simple college search. I like the Supermatch College Search. It allows you to input uh, different parameters and see which schools match your interests. So you can put location, major, scores, um, and all kinds of things. And then it will give you the percentage, uh, the schools with the highest percent uh, match to what you asked. In addition, we have over 200 colleges visiting Brookline High School in the fall. They start late September and uh, it goes till the end of November or to mid-November. Every block we have a college representative visiting Brookline High. They are uh, in uh, the College and Career Center waiting for our students. And usually this representative that comes into Brookline High School is the same person who's going to read your file. So it's a great opportunity to introduce yourself, uh, to talk to the representative. I highly recommend it. I'll post those meetings on Navians uh, and you'll get an inform um, informational email from me as well on when the colleges are coming in. Uh, we will have a BHS college fair on March 13th at 6.30 p.m. We have a, uh, already about 100 schools signed up for the fair. It's a great opportunity to learn about new schools that you haven't heard about. Uh, the other way to look at schools, uh, February uh, break and April break college visits, we highly recommend students to go during April break to look at the college campuses. This is the time when college students are actually on campus, so you don't just see the buildings, you also are able to see what kind of student goes to that school. So um, one caveat to this, you don't have to do the intergalactic college search. You can just, because we live in Boston area, we have so many schools around us, you can just look at the uh, large public schools like BU, uh, Brandeis uh, for a smaller school, and then large public like UMass Amherst. So you really don't have to spend a lot of money on looking at schools. But if you can't afford it and can go, it's a great time uh, to look at college. All right, well, uh, the most important point of this presentation is probably this. We ask all our students to apply to several safety, several match, and several reach school. That's the key to a successful and stressless college process. 
It's really, really hard when a student applies just to rich schools, seven rich schools, doesn't get in anywhere, and then uh, uh, cries in our office, and we try to find a school at a very late date. It's a much calmer and better process if you apply to safety, match, and reach. And we have a great way of knowing which schools are safety, match, and reach because in Naviance, we collect the data for the, uh, all our students, their GPA, their standardized test scores, and we plot it for each college they apply to. And then we indicate if the student got into that college or didn't, if they uh, got in or they were denied. So uh, parents and students can afterwards plot for every school they apply to uh, their uh, statistical probability of getting into that school. So this is one of the schools, and I created the um, fake student, Sam Sample, who has about 1,100 in um, SAT and uh, 3.3 in GPA. So Sam Sample will always be at this 3.3 GPA and then SAT here. This is the GPA axis, this is the SAT axis. So uh, all axes are students who didn't get in, and then green check marks are students who did get in. So usually at this point I ask the students to tell me if this is a reach, match, or safety school. And you can see clearly that Sam sample is uh, way above in GPA and SAT than the rest of the students who get into the school. So that's a very clear safety school. Here's Sam Sample on the same point, 3.3, but he is way below the students who are getting into this particular school. So this will be a rich school. And now this is actually the graph for UMass Amherst. It's a very popular school to apply to from uh, Brooklyn High. Sam is still there, uh, and you can see the majority of kids are here, so it's, it's uh, a match school. Although in the recent years, it started moving upwards uh, it's becoming less of a match because uh, UMass Amherst does offer uh, a very reasonable uh, tuition by, uh, by standards of now nowadays standards so a lot of students are applying there actually in a minute I'll show you uh, how many students apply to UMass and other schools uh, this is another question from our survey and uh, our students say that they, uh, about 20% got into the rich school, 60% got into the target or likely school, and another 18 are going to the safety school. So again, this is where students are going. And this is another demonstration of how important it is to have rich, uh, match, and safety schools on your list. Because we have about 20% going to reach, another 20 going to safety, and another 60 going to your match school. So you have to have all three on your list. Uh, given that said, uh, it's a really great statistic that colleges that our students from last class are attending, the first and second choice schools, 62% say they're going to the first or second choice school, and then 28 to third and fourth. So we're doing really well with our population. Colleges really like Brookline High School, so we're really happy with the results. This is our uh, most popular colleges for the class that just graduated. You can see UMass Amherst leads the way. Uh, we have 250 students apply, 148 accepted, and 26 attended. Uh, B then we have BU, UMass Boston, Boston Northeastern, uh, Mass Bay, UMass Lowell, Vermont, Harvard, Leslie, and Wentworth. Uh, you can see additional information on the presentation that I uploaded on the website. And also you can just plot each school on Naviance. So it's a really powerful, uh, this is the data I got from Naviance. It's, Naviance is a really powerful tool. Uh, some of the current trends in college admissions, are the, as I mentioned earlier, the popularity of gap year. A lot of colleges like the students who went for a gap year. They say they get better GPA overall than uh, students who didn't. They come back more mature, they know what they want, and they study harder. Uh, study abroad is a hugely popular option. Uh, when I attend those sessions when colleges come in, a lot of students ask about study abroad. And the third is the test optional. A lot of, a lot of schools are realizing they were losing some kids who are really smart, really good students, but they didn't do well on standardized tests. So now over 800 schools in the country 
uh, test optional. And I'll show the website that allows you to see which schools are test optional. Another thing is the demonstrated interest. We hear from colleges again and again that they want to see the students demonstrate their interest in the school. Some of them have the programs that actually count the number of times a student opened the email, uh, the contacts with the, from the student to the school, uh, coming on tour, and things like this. Another thing is alternative admit programs. You'll see students getting in from the January. Uh, it's called January Admit. All students uh, getting into college and college sending them to another country for the first semester. Again, those are, uh, for some students, it's great options. Uh, another popular thing is design your own major. A lot of colleges allow their students to design their own majors, and this is very popular with Brooklyn High students as well. And then finally, the campus experience becomes uh, really big, uh, and if you go on college tours, you'll hear them talk about how many Starbucks they have on campus. Uh, how, and a lot of times when I tour the schools, I notice it's almost like an all-inclusive resort. Uh, they talk about the amazing gyms they have, the amazing facilities. So um, I'd say campus experience is, is really important for this uh, in the current trends in college admissions. I'll quickly talk about the teacher recommendations. Uh, we ask, uh, usually colleges want two recommendations and usually it's from junior year. If you need to get a recommendation from a different uh, year teacher, I suggest you, I recommend you talk to your guidance counselor. It has to be a teacher who knows you well, who can write good things about you. Uh, and I always ask students to tell, ask the teacher if they will write a good recommendation. So that allows the teachers to step back and say no. Uh, the majority of our teachers will agree and write, will write a really good recommendation to our students. Again, it's really important that you talk to your guidance counselor about teacher recommendations and choosing a teacher recommendation is really important. Your guidance counselor knows the teachers, knows you, so I would recommend talking to your guidance counselor about teacher recommendations. Uh, this is the list of test optional schools, fairtest.org. Uh, is a great website. It lists all those schools that I was talking about that they that don't need the uh, standardized tests. Highly recommend for using that website. Uh, talking about the standardized tests, the APs are in May and SITs are in March, May, June, and August, and ACTs are in April, June, and July. Uh, the keys here that I want to point out is that some students take APs as a juniors. And uh, they are usually offered on the same, sometimes on the same week as SITs. So I always caution students about taking too many exams in one week. Uh, another couple of things, we've got a couple of new dates this year. SIT will have an August date and ACT will have a July date. So there's two additional options for our students to take uh, standardized tests. A lot of our students take standardized tests once in the, at the end of their junior year and once again in the beginning of their senior year. Uh, so that allows them to see what they did right or not and study over the summer and take it again. I'll talk now about the three types of uh, admission decisions. This is the regular decision where you apply by January 15th, you're here by April 1st, and then you have time to compare financial aid, business schools, and uh, uh, get in by May 1st. Uh, you have to choose by May 1st. This is the standard regular decision. Uh, in addition, there's, not, uh, there's uh, the early decision, and this is a binding decision. So you apply to only one school, early decision, and you have to go to that school if you get in. So you can only apply to one school, early decision. If the entire process is early, you have to apply by December 1st, you're here by December 15th, and then you don't have time to choose, your decision is binding, okay? Uh, and then final uh, is early action. You apply by November 15th. You're here by December 15th. You still have time to compare financial aid and business schools because this early action is not binding. You can apply to as many schools as you like, early action, and you choose by May 1st. Now, this er the early action really is created for students who is really organized. Uh, he or she can get all the materials out by November 15th and here earlier. Uh, and I really like UMass Amherst's uh, early, uh, early action program. A lot of our students apply early action to UMass Amherst to hear back and know if they're in or not. Um, 
one thing I have to say about early decision is that for some schools, wh when you apply early decision, they know you will not have time to compare financial aid because you have to go for early decision. You have to go to that school. So a lot of times, some schools will not give you the full uh, financial aid package because they know you would not be able to uh, compare it. Uh, some schools that would do uh, would give you full financial aid package, some wouldn't. Uh, so I really recommend talking to your guidance counsel or talking to me before making the uh, early decision application. Uh, based on our last year's class, early decision, we had 15% of our students get an early decision, and then uh, another 19 early action, and then 48 regular decisions. So the rough split is about 50% of our kids get in early, 50% of our kids apply regular, get in regular. So it's half of the class. Uh, we will be offering a post-graduation options night for students with learning disabilities on April 3rd at 7 p.m. Uh, this is a night where we have a panel of speakers, uh, and usually it's a question and answer moment uh, with our parents and students to help students on IEPs, 504s, ICAPs, uh, or just students who have any learning differences uh, to ask about college and what supports colleges have. Again, a uh, final reminder is that uh, you should look at safety, match, and reach schools when you are applying, and then talk to your guidance counselor and make sure they uh, answer your questions about the college process. This is my favorite book about the college process, Where You Go Is Not Who You'll Be by Fra Frank Bruni. I recommend it to all the parents uh, and students. And I just have one quote that I really like. The fa for, uh, for too many parents and their children, getting into a highly selective school is seen as the conclusive measure of a young person's worth, a binding verdict on the life that he or she has led up to that point, uncontestable harbinger of the success or disappointments to come. Win or lose, this is when the judgment is made. By pushing kids relentlessly and narrowly towards one of the most prized schools in the country, you are probably setting them up for a heartbreak, and you're imparting a questionable set of values. Your control over the outcome is very, very limited, and outcome says nothing definitive about your talent and potential. I love that quote. Again, this is where you go is not who you'll be by Frank Bruni. I highly recommend all my junior parents to read this book, and students as well, but I know they don't have time to read the book. Uh, thank you so much.